my texting texting hello there my name is stephanie if you're watching thank you for tuning in we'll be starting in just a minute just needing to make sure all the setup is correct and that is actually going live on facebook as well as youtube Thank you, Brian, for making sure that um, our sound and video is showing. All right, I'm just going to take a sip here and then we'll get started. If you have any fabrics that you would like to test use for this uh, Furushiki live session today. I encourage you to go grab uh, some bandanas or silk scarf that you have. Um, as long as they are square in shape, um, I will highly recommend using them. As well as any bottles or little jars that you want to demo with you, uh, practice with you. Otherwise, uh, we will be recording this live session so you can always go back and watch it um, when you're ready with all the different materials. Thank you, Omni Gino, for checking and making sure our sound and video is coming through on YouTube. All right, here we go, going live. Hi everybody, my name is Stephanie. I'm the founder of Sutaibu, which is a sustainable brand that we promote products that will encourage our users to be creative as, uh, as, uh, as well as interacting with the products um, to spread the message of sustainability. So what we sell at Sutaibu is art prints, which I hand paint them myself and I translate it in, into a uh, fabric cloth such as fushiki. And the fushiki comes in square shapes in different standard size. You can wrap gifts, you can wear it as a neck scarf. And the production process that we have done, we utilize every single yardage on the fabric. So all the remnants that comes with the production lot will also be turned into some kind of accessories and they're all limited um, available run, I guess you can call it. So all the items that you see on our website are limited items as far as the accessory goes. As for the furushiki, it will come and go uh, depending on what's popular. And this, we also try not to incorporate too many different uh, prints uh, as long as they're functional and they're popular among the size that our customer uh, typically use we try to keep them available for um, people to purchase all right just a little housekeeping on the things that we've done so far uh, so Taibu is a brand that started in 2019 so we are pretty new we're trying different things and live streaming is no different um, this year is very difficult for a lot of people especially us artists and people who has a little small handmade shop who will usually go to art arts and craft shows um, during the year uh, because of COVID we weren't able to go at all um, I remember around March are the times that were very difficult for a lot of us and a lot of my shows were starting around that time because springtime was when um, outdoor shows started to um, come up and because of COVID a lot of them canceled and got pushed back. Um, we started seeing some of the shows are coming back here and there um, but obviously not a lot of people are very confident however we um, are trying to you know do different things online whether it's um, 
promoting our products online or doing live stream sessions to teach you how you can interact with the products that we sell, particularly for Ushiki. Um, currently, we are only selling a few um, categories um, like Fushiki hair accessories like scrunchies or headbands and um, what do you call it um, neckties and but I don't really call them a, a specific purpose because we're trying to promote the idea of using an item for many different purpose um, that's the message behind Furushiki and that's what we stand for as a brand so therefore we don't try to label our products um, that is only for a single purpose and other things that we also do are you know art prints and we try to also incorporate the art process and i know a lot of people are very interested in um, how you can paint something put together digitally and then turn it into textile so those are things that we're looking into possibly also teaching in the future but right now i think holiday season is coming so a lot of people are buying gifts and preparing them to send out to their friends and family so fushiki is actually a very sustainable way because you get to uh, reuse the fabric over and over again whether you use it as a tablecloth or a bento box wrap or a decorative pillowcase you know anything possible with a fabric you can use with furushiki as long as you have the right size all right so this live session already started last weekend this is a three weekend live sessions every saturday and sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning pacific time um, they're all recorded so if you're interested in tuning back into the previous episodes you can check under our Facebook and YouTube library to learn about the different techniques as because we are trying to do a different technique every single session uh, just kind of be more interesting and you know introduce a little bit more of the styles that you can wrap with furushiki um, so this session is different than yesterday as well as last weekend's and for next weekend will be our last ones. We are not going to announce what styles they are just because we want to kind of keep it as a surprise and we're trying different channels too and hopefully we can uh, get more people um, into furushiki wrapping in the coming years not just you know this month or next month is something that we believe in spreading the word and especially right now with so many options we have glitter paper with paper brown paper we have um, you know paper bags that you can wrap with but if you think about it a lot of them are just single use like paper you can't quite reuse them over again um, fabric is actually very versatile however I do start seeing some retailers out there they're using the idea of using furoshiki however they're not quite you know multi-purpose I think they're more just single use um, advertising of using furoshiki I think the touch is very nice of them to include that idea um, maybe a lot of people are not very um, used to or not understanding the purpose behind because we're kind of spoiled I have to say we're spoiled with all the different options that we have out there and accessibility right and price point and just those little things if we think about it we got to be very cautious of how we spend our money too right on what kind of things that we can actually keep for a long time so enough of me talking i'm going to start on teaching you a little bit what fushiki is about all right thank you Alni Gino, for letting me know my audio is coming through clippy and i just turned down a little bit hopefully that's better all right so we're going to turn over to the slides so again my name is stephanie ip and i'm the founder at sutai Bu. i'm based in los angeles if you're tuning in from a different part of the world um, just so you know los angeles is in california in the united states so here we have a lot of different culture um, japanese um, german 
Koreans, Japanese, Chinese, I think I just mentioned Japanese, uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, um, any parts of the world people travel to Los Angeles and want to stay for the good weather. So just so you know, that's my little background. That's where I'm based. Um, is it going, not going to the next slide here? All right. <clears throat> so the history of Fushiki. So previously I had covered the history of origami just because I do incorporate some origami uh, techniques. However, that's not my focus. Um, if you're interested <clears throat> in tuning back, <clears throat> excuse me, to our origami um, session, you can go back to our very beginning of the holiday life for this year. <clears throat> but today we're only going to cover Fushiki. So Fushiki is not something I have invented. It actually uh, began a uh, long, long time ago, at least more than a thousand years ago, when textile was first invented. Um, not a lot of people have access or know what textile is. Um, so back then, people obviously wear clothes that are made with textile. However, um, as I mentioned, textile back in the day don't have a lot of options and uh, it's more of the upper class people or if you're like the king, queen or emperor, you get to you know, have the taste of the first hand of um, luxury you know, fabrics such as silk. So when fabric um, first got invented, um, they were mostly um, not available among the common people. However, because the upper class people get to have their hands on such goods. They also wanted to be able to, um, I guess, show off and utilize what they have on hand um, to decorate their um, interior uh, palace and homes or, you know, like if they're on TV or actually back then don't have TV or do they start having that. Um, but if they're appearing in public, they want to show off what they have owned. So as you know, back in the day, the more fabric you wear on your body, the, the richer and the wealthier it shows to the public eye. <clears throat> so Fushiki was something just a way for them to gift wrap uh, among the upper class or, you know, just get decorations or even transporting, transporting their um, goods um, within their travels back in the day. So that's how it was used and they're typically in square cloth, just like origami. Origami is a paper folding technique with square paper. Furushiki is with a piece of cloth. All right, as you can see on the bottom too, when fabric became more accessible, uh, people started to adopt the technique of using furushiki to help them go around cities and traveling on trains, you know, moving big bundles of things and carrying them on their body or even tying them up all together as a big bundle and um, go on the train or the buses traveling or even go shopping, right? You can use a little tote bag very easily uh, assembled and also de um, disassembled. So you, it's good because it's a fabric that is wrapped into different shapes, you can easily untie the knots and turn it back into a folded tiny form. So it's a very versatile way of transporting the fushiki as well as turning them into a functional item that you can use every day. So previously we learned um, from the lower left, I'm going upwards to Furushiki upper right. We learned uh, origami or floral bouquet, um, just using brown paper bags that you can probably get from um, your takeout. Like these days we get a lot of takeouts from McDonald's or Burger King or Chick-fil-A. Over here I have a demonstration of using a Chipotle brown bag, um, just kind of showing off their cute little design on their brown bag print 
and turn it into a little floral bouquet that you can add to your decoration of whether it's interior home, right? Or your gift wrapping. And then next to it, I have a box wrapping technique that I've shown um, three different ones in the past three live sessions. Actually, four of them with a handle. So like a <clears throat> gift wrapping box also turn into like a little shopping bag sort of and you can also wear that because there's a bigger piece for she you can wear that as a neck scarf or decorative uh, purse scarf too and next to it you can wrap um, in a basket form so like if you bake or if you have like a little garden you like to harvest and share your produce and your goodies with your friends and family this is actually a good way to transport it or gift it out as a set so you don't have to use any plastic wrap whatsoever and you can you know show off your fabric wrapping techniques and share among your friends and family and then on top we have the different bottle wrapping techniques you can do on the left you have a single bottle with a little flower and two leaves you know coming out all in one furushiki shape so it depends on what kind of furushiki that you're using right for that particular one <clears throat> it was the overall print so the flower isn't very obvious in contrast but if you use more of a solid fabric you can see that clearly and then the next one the one next to it is a double bottle wrap that you see you can wrap it as a um, carrier or as a uh, like a I guess a holder for two bottles of whatever inside, whether it's a bottle of wine, bottle of handcrafted beer, or if you handcraft beer yourself, you can obviously give them out as well to your friends and family. Or if you're going to a brewery tasting, you want to bring your own bottles, right? Or own jars, own cup, whatever. Any type of circular form, you can wrap them into like a bundle like that. Um, doesn't have to be circular actually it can be square as well any types of shapes and the one next to it is a single jar that you can you know wrap and then tightly um, carry them like a little bundle so imagine having a box shape inside it can be like a bento box wrap so going to work or nowadays we can't go to work physically some of us don't get to go to work physically in the office um, but in the future right if all of us get to go back to our normal days uh, we get to wrap things and show off our little furushiki to go to school go to work and that's typically how the japanese people would carry and wrap their items in the in the daily uh, life settings and obviously there's more um, options out there but i'm just showing you what generally people would wrap with and in what shape and form so today we're gonna focus more on this, uh, I guess, DIY kit that I've put together. We also sell on our little shop online. You can check out on our website. And what it comes with is basically a blank 17-inch um, furushiki cotton cloth. And you can decorate it by using a Sharpie or whatever techniques that you choose. Basically, the idea is to allow you to do it yourself and also to enjoy the furushiki afterwards. So in a minute, I'm going to show you what's included. But um, the three styles we're going to learn to... Actually, I'm going to show you two styles and then I'll show you what you can also do with the furushiki. So coming from the left to top, upper right, uh, left bottom left uh, we're gonna learn how to turn the furushiki into a makeup pouch so for us ladies we like to carry our makeup pouch in our purse right so what I have found personally is that when you do makeup um, when your makeup pouch is full of stuff with a zipper on top or maybe some people like to roll up their brushes and try to organize it like a painter's palette type of way and either way um, I think the one the idea of using a bag sometimes your items get lost like within the bag right or your bag get dirty <coughs> 
so you have to kind of wash it. But how often do we really wash and clean our fushiki? I mean, uh, makeup pouch. For me, I don't really clean my makeup pouch. But um, the idea of fushiki is that you can, you know, just kind of be creative and you can even unravel the fabric easily, put in the wash, and then be able to use it the next day again. Typically when you wash a bag, it's hard to dry it and you have to consider whether it's made with plastic, if there's prints, glitter, whatever. It may melt during your drying process or it may come out, come off during your washing process, right? So it's kind of messy. So this idea is just an idea. You can turn it into a little pouch shape by placing a structure inside and also um, to be creative on how you can <coughs> start your makeup, um, I guess, little stage for you to put on your makeup. Anyway, I'm going to go into more of that later. And then next to it is a little jar um, gift wrap that you can do. I actually made a YouTube video on you uh, online that you can go back into learning the different ways of, uh, I guess, uh, using this DIY kit. I also went through how you can decorate it with bottle caps. So you can tune on into our YouTube channel and look for that video um, with um, the title, uh, I believe it's called Wrap with a Mason Jar, because right there is a Mason Jar, I forgot. Anyway, we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how exactly you do that live. And then next and lastly, we're gonna learn um, I guess I'm just gonna go through, I can't quite show you how you can exactly turn a Fujiki into a face mask and scrunchie. But the idea is that if someone receives your gift, right? And they kind of, excuse me, they kind of wanna turn it into a second purpose item or second and third item. The Fujiki in 17 inch actually is a perfect size to turn it into a reusable, double layer face mask that you can wear and also a matching scrunchie. So if let's say you did decorate it with um, tie dye or shibori, right? It's a beautiful print. However, if the person would prefer it in a more functional item um, or more single purpose item, they can, or you can, or actually we also offer that surface to turn your Fushiki into a face mask and scrunchie. Has to be a 17 inch though, because that's the size that actually would work with um, making a Fushiki uh, face mask and scrunchie. All right, so those are three things that we're gonna cover today. If you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to leave it in our comment box and I will do my best to moderate that during the live session as well. And that's the whole reason I've been doing a live is to be able to interact with you and answer any questions. Or if you wanna see anything, um, you know, of me rapping, you can also leave me a comment. In the future too, if you're interested in seeing me wrap certain things, you can leave me a comment, message me, and I will be happy to share that with you. All right, going to the next page right here. Oops. All right, so first thing, you really need to find the right size fushiki, right? Just like gift wrapping, you do need to know what kind of gift you're wrapping and what you wrapping with. So knowing the size is very important before you start off. And there's actually a standard formula that the Fujiki uh, follows and it's not very rigid. Um, so you, you can choose to follow it or not, but that's just um, a beginner foundation of Fujiki is to find the longest length of the object you plan to wrap. And also in wanting to make sure the diagonal length of the square cloth, so like the Fushiki, 
um, will be at least three times that longest length of the object you plan to wrap. So in a second, I'm going to show you physically how you can find out whether your fushiki will be enough, uh, big enough for the object you plan to wrap. All right, this is just a graph, graphic uh, placement on how you can measure that out. And if you are thinking of buying furushiki online, and I would suggest to go for furushiki size that's between 17 inch to probably 27 inch. Um, those are the you know, common size that you would be able to wrap your gifts with. And depending on the size of the gift, obviously, right? If you're giving um, a big gift that is a big box, then you probably need a bigger fushiki. And also, bigger fushiki is, um, in some people's perspective, in Japanese perspective, is more functional because you can also wear as a tote bag and you know wrapped as a picnic basket carrier and then turn it into a picnic blanket so bigger fabric has a bigger function um, I guess serves a different purpose and has a bigger surface that you can use with um, but smaller has its own um, pros and cons too smaller you can only do you know gift wrapping bento box wrapping whereas the uh, fashion accessory but not necessarily using as tablecloth right I'm going to take a sip here, talking too much. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so if you are figuring out how to find a diagonal length, there's also a formula like x square root of 2 will be the diagonal length. So if you're very nerdy about the math behind it, <clears throat> you can find out the diagonal length with that particular formula all right we're going to switch back to the front view so you can see what we're going to learn today so as i mentioned earlier we're going to learn how to do a makeup bag i just unravel it so it kind of looks like this uh, let me see if i do a overhead view here all right so i'm gonna show you how i actually put it together so you get the idea. If you recognize what these little trays are in the supermarket, they're basically, um, <clears throat> what do you call it, um, uni, you know, sea urchin trays, you know, like you put all the sea urchin here. So you can see how many sea urchin trays we, or I have collected, or we have eat, eaten this year. And what I do is um, I wash them, obviously. And then once you wash them, they're another piece of functional little object that you can possibly use for either interior decoration or for this particular purpose, I have turned it into a makeup tray, right? So you can either use the bottom um, side or the top side. I chose the top side because I like the edges um, around it. I also added, you know, scrunchies to hold and keep things um, in place. Just going to focus a little bit here. Okay. Right. So then it doesn't slide off, you know, and you can also make it into like a makeup studio, kind of popped it up here and it won't come off. Right. It's very sturdy once you have your um, scrunchies. That, you know, as girls, we like to carry scrunchies. If we have long hair, we like to have them very handy all the time. So just kind of using the idea of um, shapes and size, you can tie them as a holder as well. And then I also was able to put like a bigger shape size to see if it would slide off. Actually, it holds pretty well just because there's all these scrunchies here. So obviously if you add more scrunchies, this way and this way, you can hold even more things in different direction, even smaller items or bigger items, um, as long as it's within this, um, you know, area that you're working with. Because this 
fair, uh, this tray is eventually gonna go into this little pouch we are going to um, put together. So I would, let's see, I would put the flat things in first, right? Obviously you can use different trays. It's just something I have come up with and I thought it was very cute. And then you can stack them even, right? Because now that you have all your goodie, goodies in place, they will stack pretty well. And let me see if I can do a close up. Okay. So and then you can just quickly tie it, right? Tie it with one knot. And you can just dump it into your purse. And it won't wobble around because it's all intact in place. And you don't need to worry about the zipper or breaking down, right? Zipper breaking down or having to not be able to find what you need. Because once you open it, you can lay it all out and start doing your makeup, right? And also some people like to have a clean surface. Like if you're in like a bathroom, for instance, right? You can even use your bag as like a placement to kind of keep your stuff clean and again you can wash these trays because um, you know they serve wet food in the first place so you can obviously wash them again dry them and then reuse them make sure it's very dry put it in a toaster oven if you need to have it extra dry and then you can wash this cloth very easily and right now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I actually tie this little pouch together. I'm gonna move all the stuff away. All right, before I actually show you how to tie it, I'm gonna show you what the DIY kit comes in. So the DIY kit here, as you see, is um, in a bundle. It comes in the 17-inch Fushiki cloth that is not decorative, it's blank. And then it comes with a dual tip Sharpie. Also, it comes with a 4x4 brown box, which I have it wrapped in here, but it's around this size. And also it bundles into our little makeshift bookmark that you can turn it into a book wrap eventually too, right? At Fushiki, you can do a book wrap. So I attach two little pins in case you need to use little clips to hold your Fushiki together. But typically in Fushiki, you don't need any sort of accessories, clips or anything like that to hold it in place because they're supposed to, um, the technique of using Fushiki is so that you don't need all those different things. So it's pretty, pretty sturdy as long as you wrap it correctly. All right, so that's what's in a uh, DOI kit. And then in um, earlier, I mentioned that we have um, a video talking about how you can decorate your Fushiki with bottle caps. This is the overall look, let me see. Yep, so this is how it looks like overall. It basically started from the middle and I just keep going around and around. And obviously you can do different things like tie dyes, shibori, use different kinds of markers. But the idea is to get you started so you can decorate your fushi. All right, so how are we going to wrap that particular makeup pouch is very simple. First, once you decorate it, it becomes the front side and then the wrong side of your fabric, right? What you want to do is use have the front side of the Fushiki at a diagonal uh, placement like this, right? And then once you're ready, also to think about um, how you want to finish your fushiki. Like if you decorated your fushiki such a way that um, you want the bowl on top to have a different look, then obviously you want to wrap that 
last actually yeah so for me because it's all directional my full directional so i don't have to worry about how it will look at the end but if you want the bowl to look like stripy or clean there's no print and then in the center it will have print only then you will want to wrap your tail um, the little ribbon at the end so in that case you want your top and bottom to be the ending so right now our first step is to lay the flat fabric flat diagonally uh, with the right side of the fabric facing up and then you're gonna fold it upwards turning into a triangle making sure your top corners are laying overlapping uh, aligned overlapping uh, together all right, the next step is to kind of, um, how should I say, find a middle point in between your uh, triangle, this side of the triangle. Actually, I was trying to think, so the rule of thumb of using this particular technique is to find the middle length, middle point of this length, and then making sure once, because then the next thing you would do is tie a knot here, and then you want to make sure whatever you are putting inside will fit between the knots left to right, right? However, if I want my pouch to be slightly bigger, then I probably don't need to um, find that middle point to be exact. However, the middle point is where the balance is. If you want your item, like whatever you're using this technique to wrap, the inside is very important obviously you want to use the middle point but if it's just a makeup pouch i probably want you know somewhere that will be a little bit more roomy so i would only tie to maybe one third um, of this side of the furushiki triangle so one third will be like around here right so what you want to do is I like to kind of fold all the edges in so I can have a clean um, knot. I mean, it's not very important if the knot is actually living inside because we're tying the knot in on this side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and focus. Yep. Then having the knot inside is not very important. However, practice do help you for the future wrap so having a clean edge is important okay again on this side you'll be finding one third point right there and then fold in your edges and tie a knot also you want your knot to be tight if your knot is not tight like kind of loose like that it won't serve the purpose what you want your fushiki to look right also want to make sure it's balanced by looking at how the tail length look if they are too far off then you want to untie it all right so now i have my two knots here that's sitting one third of the length of one side of the triangle right and again, if you're just tuning in, we do typically want to find a midpoint, but because we're doing a makeup pouch, I am going to have a little bit more room for myself to work with, right? So you can see there's more room. These are the knots over here and you have more rooms, at least two finger room over here to place all your different size and shapes makeup um, utensils. Uh, do you call them utensils? Tools. Yeah. So if you have them in different shapes and sizes, it's very helpful to give yourself a little bit more room, right? All right. So once you have that, what we're going to do here is open that pouch. Basically, you're creating a little pouch already. And then you want to flip this under. And now you have a clean little pouch that you can work with. Also, the side is very satisfied to look at too, like all the drapes, right? As long as your fabric is clean and try to iron it also if you want it to look a little straighter. 
but um, this particular fabric is very wrinkle resistant too. Also, you know, it's not really crispy fabric. I've used it many times, washed it many times. The Sharpie print actually stay very well on the fabric. So once you have that, you are having a little area you can put your stuff in. And the ties will just sit right there in the center, right? You kind of want to open your knots, making sure they are fully open. And either you put a tray in or not, up to you. It's just an idea, right? Putting a tray in actually gives your pouch structure. So when you carry them, um, you can have some kind of placement structure on the bottom. So when you um, we open it, everything is kind of organized, right? The idea is that you want things to be organized. However, if you don't care, if you just put in candy, right? A pouch of candy, you can just lay it in there however you want. But this is the idea and then you just kind of stack them. And then on top, what you're going to do here is to tie a single knot. Or if you want it to be a little bit more sturdy, then you can tie a square knot. So the difference between square knot and that knot is that a square knot is going from left to right and right to left when you're tying the tails. That knot is left to left and left to left. So that knot won't allow you to easily unravel the knot and square knot will. All right. So once you have that, as you can see, I kind of tuck everything under and you're ready to go. Simple, easy, and you know, you don't have to fuss around with zippers. You can wash it quickly. If you need to, you know, carry it around, I would suggest to tie a square knot. Make sure that your knot is also tight and you can go around with it. Let me see if I can do a front view. Yeah, so you can go around with it, carry it. Obviously, if your um, Froshiki cloth is bigger, then you can have a longer handle too, right? But makeup pouch typically don't need a long handle. So it's just like that. And then once you are ready to go for a makeup session, then you can open it back up again and, you know, have your little studio right in front of you or if you're in a public restroom. Um, for instance, then you have a working space. There are fabrics out um, there, Fushiki fabric, that are water resistant on the outside, kind of have like a polyester finish on the outside. And for that purpose, it will allow you to keep whatever inside dry. So, you know, if you're looking into Fushiki fabric, that's one option. Um, but if you just, you know, starting off using regular sturdy woven fabric will be um, a good choice too. I don't recommend any decorative fabric such as, um, I guess, embroidery or like sequins type fabric because it may catch on things. However, if you're very confident that the way you wrap your whatever um, shape that you are doing with your furoshiki, then you can use whatever fabric you want, but ideally you want to use woven fabric that's not stretchy. All right, so the next thing we're going to learn how to wrap is a little jar. Actually, I don't have a jar here. Let me just quickly go grab a jar in my studio. Actually, for video production, for video production, you do need a lot of things. So hold on one second.
like here on top. All right. So I have this little jar here. Um, and I'm going to show you how to find the right size Roshiki with a shape like this. So earlier we did makeup, um, I guess makeup pouch with a tray. And I believe you still need to, yeah, I didn't mention how you would find the right size for Roshiki, but because we're only using our DIY 17 inch standard size, I'm just showing you what the options would be um, functional with the size, you know, um, of the Furushiki in the DIY kit. But I'm gonna demonstrate to you how you can actually find the right size Furushiki and whether um, your Furushiki will be big enough for the object that you plan to wrap. All right, so over here, we're just gonna unravel my makeup pouch here. Okay, so it's very easy, right? You can just turn it inside out. The inside gets dirty, you can wash it very easily. Okay, here we go. All right, so earlier I mentioned that you do need to find the longest length of the object you plan to wrap. So for this particular example here, we're using a jar that is approximately four inches, all right? And then this tray is longer. I say it's around six, five to six inches wide. And again, I don't have all my tools. I don't know where my measuring tape went. It was just sitting right here yesterday. It's so weird when you need all those things in front of you, it's not there anymore. <laughs> okay, anyway, so 17 inch um, side over here can yield around 19 to 20 inch diagonal uh, width, length, width, length. <laughs> so then the idea is that when you, you're only wrapping one tray because you're stacking them, but for the longest length, you want it to sit three times of the longest length, right? Within the diagonal side, uh, diagonal length of your square cloth. So like right here, you can see it fits three of them. Obviously, if you don't have multiple three of the same thing, you can do the math measurements and making sure it fits within. So if this tray was six inches, so times it by three is 18 inch. It will fit within the diagonal length of this, um, 17 Fushiki because diagonal length will be about 20 inch. So as you can see, you have some room to play with. If you want to have more room to work with, with a smaller base item or object that you're wrapping, such as creating a longer handle, then you probably need a bigger Fushiki. So I would go one size up like a 20 inch, 18 or 20 inch will yield a little bit more space for you diagonally. So that's just um, how you would find your fruit, right size Fushiki. And for this bottle, it will fit because it um, actually will fit three of these as you can see. However, if you are wrapping a jar like this, right? This jar is a lot bigger than this one. And you can see how you can't quite fit three of them in here. So then this Furushiki will not be enough to wrap this jar. You will need a bigger Furushiki. I would say somewhere like even longer. So that probably like 27 inch or even 20 inch may be enough, depending on the style too. Like, so it really depends on the style as well as the object you're planning to wrap. 
All right, so we only have six more minutes because this is a one hour um, live session. We're gonna just go through how you can wrap this little jar. It's very simple. First, you're going to place your object right in the center of your fushiki diagonally. Okay, and next you're gonna lift your bottom corner and flip it over, right? And then once you have that, kind of warp the fabric around the bottle tightly so you have a nicer grip of your fabric and the object and then start rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Until you have your little triangle sitting on top. Right? On top here. Let's see, right here. Okay. The next thing you are gonna do here is to find, you know, kind of warp your drapes around the object and kind of, let's see, because the next thing here is to tie the knot on top, right? So you're kind of working your tail upwards. So how you can find a clean edge, I'm going to show you from the close-up view. I'm going to turn this around so you can see the corners right here. What you're going to do is to press down on each side. So this is your front, right? So left and right side, press it down, making sure it kind of warps around the shape of your object. If it's a square box, it'll be easier because right now we're using a round shape. We have to make sure it kind of warps around the bottle. And then you're gonna lift as you have your clean edges, start to lift the tail. So now you have your clean edge. All right, same for your other side. As you're doing the right side, make sure you hold on to your fold on the left side. And then once you have a grip on the right side as well, right side as well, then you can tie a square knot here. Again, square knot means left over right, right over left. So towards the end, you can decorate it with any dry flowers or any little accessories you have. And for me, I like to make sure my under layer of the fabric, under layer means the wrong side of the fabric, it's not showing. So as I'm tying my ribbon on top, I kind of fix the tail before I actually tie it super tight. So you work your way through. All right, so close up view. This is how it looks. All right, again, get a little handle. You can tie, uh, put in a few decorative items here and it will be good to go. All right, so that kind of concludes um, the wrapping techniques that you're learning today. And I'm gonna show you what you can actually do with the furoshiki. So the 17 inch furoshiki actually yields into two different accessories items if you plan on making a face mask that is around the size, which is pleated and it has a double layer so you can put your filters in here and it will hold your filter in place nicely because it's you know like a pocket basically and you can also wash it obviously the ties i have here going upwards some people like to wear it over the head and just because i tie it this way doesn't mean you can not tie it the other way so those strings are actually just four strings laying um, loose on each other. And I just discovered this tying method because some people were wondering how you can tie with long strings. But that's just one method. 
and I have actually put together a tutorial on how you can turn a 17 inch furushiki into a face mask as well as a scrunchie like this. So imagine your scrunchie or your furushiki is already decorated into this print, right? And then turn it into a face mask. Then you have a design, you know, DIY face mask yourself. And then this scrunchie um, is actually a very thick um, scrunchie. So we call it crunchy scrunchie because it's so crunchy. <laughs> Except there's no chips on it. So anyway, so that's the idea of how you can turn a furushiki in 17 inch size into a face reusable face mask as well as a scrunchie. You can just decorate on your hand or put it on your hair. And that concludes our today's live session. It has been one hour. If you're watching, thank you so much for watching towards the end of this video. <laughs> um, that's my husband in the background being very creative by adding more volume and sound. <laughs> Anyway, so thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested again to tune back into other furushiki wrapping technique, you can check back on Facebook and YouTube library to watch back the previous session. Again, we have another weekend next weekend, um, two more live sessions, and I'm not gonna review what styles we're learning. So stay tuned. Um, you can RSVP on our website to keep yourself a reminder as well as what type of materials you will probably need so you can get ready for a live session next weekend. All right, happy holidays. I hope you learned something new today and I will let you get back to be creative. Bye.